Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah Pavin. I'm an Olympian and beach volleyball world champion and a longtime professional indoor player. We are almost ready to start Q season four, but if you've been with me through this whole Q journey, you know that at the end of each season, I have to do my little wrap ups, which include the season all-star team and the entire series all-star team, as well as the top five moments from each season. So today we're going to go through the top five moments from Q season three. This season was very, very short and only encompassed like one match, but it was really hard <laughs> to come up with five moments. Um, the five top moments from this season. There were a lot of tears shed by me and hopefully also by you. I don't want to be alone in that. Um, lots of goosebumps, lots of just like jaw dropping moments. So like it was really, really hard for me to narrow this down. So I had to call upon the love house. If you're not familiar with Sarah's Love House, you know if you've watched that it is reserved for the players in Q that I particularly love. Um, but it's also the name of the channel members. Um, so I, I called on them for some ideas and they did not disappoint. So I had a, a decent idea of what a couple of my moments would be, but they really stepped up and we worked together to come up with this list. They gave me a lot to think about um, as they told me what their top moments were. It really got me thinking. So I think I narrowed it down. Um, <laughs> the honorable mention list is extensive. Let's just put it that way. But here are my top five moments from Q season three. I'm honestly a little bit worried <laughs> and nervous to share the top five moments because I feel like we're gonna agree on a couple or a few of them for sure. But it's like the four, five, region that I'm worried that you guys are going to revolt. Um, but coming in at number five, we have the Tendo Ushijima post-match combo. You guys, I don't know what it was about this, but it had me like full out sobbing. Like, it was, <laughs> I can't even explain it for all of the things that have happened in Haikyuu. That got me real good. Um, I don't know, it was just so beautiful. Like they're laying there stretching after the game, their careers are over for high school. And just like hearing how they, Tendo was like so supportive, like really showing their friendship. It sort of made Ushijima seem like a real person because for the whole series he was just put on this super high pedestal as being untouchable not at the same level um super athlete so to hear that conversation at the end um between tendo and ushijima and tendo saying he's gonna follow him and cheer him on um, fully understanding that he's probably not going to continue with the sport and just like Ushijima expressing his friendship with Tendo like I don't know it's just like so much more than the sport you know and it just really spoke to how relationships and friendships are made and that these guys are just like kids who are playing a sport that they love and some of them are going to stop here and some are going to go on and continue to bigger and higher levels in the game and I don't know I I loved it I feel like this one might be a little unexpected for some of you but it really really got me so the Tendo Ushijima post-match conversation comes in at number five Number four, 
comes to you from episode nine. Do you know what I'm thinking? Okay, you probably do. It is Noya's double save. There were multiple layers to this one that made it special to me. And look at me, I'm smiling, I can barely talk. Um, <laughs> number one, the double save, save happened after we had seen several of the players, particularly the older players, really feeling it. They were exhausted. They almost couldn't move anymore. Um, and we're hearing about how much they're hurting, um, et cetera. And so the, it was like, I believe it was match point for Shira Torizawa. The ball hits the tape and Daichi literally cannot move. Um, so Noya comes like diving in front of it, keeps the ball alive. I believe it went over and then to follow it up, he like sacrifices the body to get the dig in the air and keep the play alive. Like the game could have been over there. Okay. But so that alone is like amazing, but I think the real kicker that turns this into a top five moment is that afterward he was like, you know, you can count on me even if your thighs are splitting open. Like I will like, I will guard your backs, but you have to fight the mid air battles. I clearly just paraphrased. Okay. That is not exactly what he said, but you have the idea. So it was that statement after that, when he was like, no matter how bad you're hurting, like I will guard your backs but you need to fight the mid air battles for me. <sighs> I almost passed away right there. Like <laughs> we got a taste of that in season one when we met him and just like his whole attitude towards being a libero. But that, he definitely had some big moments throughout the season, but that moment right there, saving the match when his teammates were feeling at their worst he just lived it. He lived exactly what he said he was. And I felt like that was so, so special. And Noya was a slightly quieter character in this season. Um, we saw him struggling to, you know, figure out Ushijima's attacks at the very beginning. And then the focus kind of shifted to Suki's thinking on blocking and how to employ like the total defense with the block and the defense in the back row. And obviously Noya made some great plays, but like he was pretty quiet, I would say for the most part. And that moment was it. And it was such an impactful and big moment that it was like made the whole rest of his role in that season so much more worth it. The number three moment in Q season three, I feel like I'm gonna get called out for combining two separate things but I kind of feel like they, well, I don't kind of feel, they for sure occurred simultaneously. So I'm making them one, <laughs> okay? And it is the imagery of Ushijima like pushing down the first years and like trying to hold them down. And then the third years coming to the rescue and like, you know, Karasuno lifting up and like destroying Ushijima, like that visual paired with the final rally where every single person on Karasuno played a part, which is also what we saw in the final rally of season two, every single Karasuno player touched the ball. So it is not lost on me that the same thing happened in season three, just really solidifying the concept that Karasuno is a team and they win and lose together. Um, so they did happen at the same time because as the final rally was happening, we did see that imagery of like Ushijima, like trying to overpower and push down um, the first years, but yes, it counts as one. Okay. Um, this one, Again, amazing. How many times can I use the same word? I don't know. Um, but for the whole like concept, we have um, 
So the whole match, Tsukushima and the blockers had been leaving the channel open for Noya, uh, blocking the angle, leaving the line open for him. But on that particular play, Tsukushima made the call to close the line instead and prioritize that with the block, which exposed the angle swing. Um, and they were hoping to kind of mess with Ushijima, but his, you know, his vision is good enough that he saw it. So Kageyama switching places with Hinata, first of all, having the wherewithal to be like, no, I need to be, I, I'm a better defender than Hinata is, so we need to switch. Kageyama stepping into that sharp angle, like almost getting blown up by that cross court swing, making an incredible dig. Daichi like laying out, saving it. Then we've got like Tanaka did something very similar. Um, Noya, like literally every single person was involved in that rally. Um, and then obviously Hinata coming from the back row for the final point, the final swing. So that rally in and of itself was beautiful. Just the whole sequence of events, how the team worked together to coordinate their block defense and everybody playing a role to keep the ball alive, lovely. But the added layer which makes this so special was the visual of like one person just imposing his will, like beating a team down beating the young players down, and then the third years coming in with their leadership, their love, their experience, and helping the first years lift Ushijima off of them. You can't write it better than that, okay? You cannot. I'm hyperventilating thinking about it, okay? Let me catch my breath. But, okay? Fair to say, whether I separated those two moments or not, those two things that I combined into one probably could have stood alone on their own, but I cheated. Okay, so shoot me, I cheated. There were too many good ones, I wanted to add a couple more, okay? So yeah, that one, full body chills. I almost ran away after that, I was like, I'm done. Um, so yes, the final rally mixed with the Ushijima like bearing down Karasuno rising is Haikyuu season three's moment number three. Okay, we are down <laughs> to our top two moments from Haikyuu season three. I think the majority of you probably know what they are. I mean, how can, I you have to know. Okay, and if you don't know, I'll give you a couple seconds to do a little head scratcher there. Um, but yes, you know. Okay, so moment number two from Haikyuu season three is from episode eight. Yes, it is Ukai at the very end yelling, don't look down. Volleyball is a sport where you're always looking up. First of all, RIP Ukai's voice actor. <sighs> Stunning work. Stunning work for almost three complete seasons. That gravelly smoker's voice was perfect, okay, for Ukai. And the fact that that was the last thing that that voice actor contributed to Haikyuu is just like so powerful to me. I, I can't even believe it. If that wasn't the last thing that Ukai's voice actor said, I still would, it still would have made the list, but I think the impact of that statement, knowing the history and everything else with that particular voice actor, just makes it that much more powerful. Um, yeah, like <laughs> you guys, if I, I know you know how much I'm obsessed with Haikyuu, but if these tangents I'm going on do not prove to you just how deep this love runs through my veins, 
I don't know what, what you expect, okay? I am all in, my friends. So, first of all, that statement, just as like practical for volleyball, obviously. Uh, volleyball is a sport where you're looking up. Yes, you wanna keep the ball in the air. Everything is happening overhead, okay? So it's just practical. But the double meaning of just like, do not get down on yourselves, don't give up. You have to keep pushing, look up, be confident. Like it was just the perfect statement at the perfect time. And that statement combined with Sukshima running back from the medical office, priceless. I mean, there's nothing else to say about it. I ended that episode and I was like, crying full body full body chills like get me out of here like so yeah number two most impactful moment of season three for me hands down so this leaves us with the top moment from season three and i'm sure let's say it together now from episode four Tsukushima's block. Oh, baby. Okay. I can't tell you how many times I have replayed that scene in my mind. I can't tell you how many times I've thought about that. Probably an unhealthy number. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. I have goosebumps right now, like thinking about it, okay? I do not have it playing in front of me. I'm just thinking about this moment and like your girl's about to just pass out. <sighs> Let me control myself. Let me gather my thoughts. The whole sequence of that play where he has the monologue about, you know, volleyball, it's just being a club. It's not important. The flashbacks to season one, to the training camp in season two, um, to, you know, I just want to stop him one time. I'm not doing my job. Speaking about Ushijima, of course, like that whole lead up to that moment was an amazing summary of Tsukushima's journey to that point. It was a perfect summary of his mindset and his thought process to that point. Um, and then to finish it with the straight down stuff block, okay, which they replayed several times, like poof, 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 poof. That is the sound effect it made, okay? That ball hit the ground before anybody else did. That is how aggressively he blocked it, dropping that hand in, okay? He showed him a little opening, dropped the hand in. Beautiful. A beautiful bait move on a block. Textbook, okay? But that alone, that whole sequence of the flashbacks, the monologue, blah, 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 with the block would have been enough. But then, <laughs> like, ooh. But then you have like the fist pump and the scream. Game over. Like, <laughs> Tsukushima went from like a guy that I tolerated to Oh my God, I love you. Where have you been all my life? Like that, okay? All of a sudden, I, I am like opening a Tsukushima fan page, okay? Writing him fan mail. <sighs> the boy won me over. The fist pump and yell though. That, if you were not impacted by that, go get yourself checked out. Okay, that's all I've got to say. Hands down, number one moment. If you disagree with me, hit me up in the comment. We can have a fight about it because like, wh what else is there? Okay. <sighs> Anyways, I'll step down 
off my soapbox now. Um, <laughs> I am sure, I'm pretty sure that you guys are gonna agree with like my top two or three. I might be surprised, I don't know. I think four or five you might have some statements about. But while we're here, I just need to run you through some honorable mention. Basically, we're just reliving this whole series because the whole, no, the whole season, because the whole season was an honorable mention. But let me grab my notepad. Honorable mention moments from High Q season three. Um, the third year backstories. <laughs> Episode six got me you know, to see how they became the fallen crows and everybody was like, oh, volleyball, I don't know if I want to commit and they stuck it out. And then you have the former captain um, about telling Daichi, like when you have your chances, you have to take them. And then just like seeing how they've taken those lessons to support their teammates and to like never give up. Beautiful. When the super fans screamed, that got me. You know, he was kind of like critical of them when they weren't so good. He was like unsure, but then when it really came down to it, the man showed up and that primal scream he gave to cheer them on, that's sports, baby. If that does, that's beautiful. Okay, um, Kageyama's dump on match point for Shira Torizawa, <sighs> ballsy. Like, I'm pretty sure Shirabu had dumped right before that and scored. And like, you gotta love the psychological games, okay? Because Kageyama's like, oh, you're gonna do that? You think you're better than me? You know what, it's match point, let me do this. Let me just take over right now because I have the confidence to do that same thing right back to you and you're not gonna stop me. For a setter to do that on match point for the other team takes some guts, let me tell you. Cause their job is to set up their hitters. So the fact that he took that risk and that it worked, I'm in love. I mentioned this before, I kind of tied it in with um, Ukai's statement, but Tsukashima running back from the medical tent, I got full body chills. The boy is back, he wanted it, he wanted to win. I'll leave it like that. Um, Kageyama being named to the youth national team. When they're jump testing at the very end and Takeda runs in and they, he announces that Kageyama was called to the youth national team. <sighs> at that moment, he was put on the same level as Ushijima. Why? Because Ushijima is the only other player that we have seen so far that was called to that team. Unless I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. That was cool. And finally, I just have to include this because I brought it up probably two dozen times throughout season, th uh, throughout season three. This is not just a moment, but just the concept of Iwazumi and Oikawa being at the match. How many, how many different ways can I take this? Number one, Oikawa in glasses. Love house material. Never thought I'd say it, but you know what I mean. Um, Iwazumi showing up to support Aikawa and be there with him, even though he didn't want to be in the game, be at the game watching. And then the respect that those two were showing, um, the teams playing. That whole concept of those two was an honorable mention in and of itself, and they didn't even play in the game. I am so excited right now. I almost can't even breathe. My heart rate is probably 170. Um, so I need to take some deep breaths. But season three was a real banger. Um, I honestly did not. Everybody was saying, oh, season three is so good. I wasn't sure because I was like, what can you do with one match, 10 episodes? I should have known better. I'm ashamed. I am ashamed that I questioned the genius of the Haikyuu writers. I should have known. So, basically the whole season was a, was a highlight. I hope you enjoyed my picks and my honorable mentions. 
I'm sure you guys have opinions of your own, so be sure to hit me up in the comments um, and let me know your thoughts. If I missed your moment, I'm sorry, but these ones either had me sobbing or full body chills, or I talked about them incessantly. So if you watch season three with me, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> so hit me up. And as always, I would love it if you would like this video, subscribe to my channel. Season four is coming, you guys. And if you do need some more content to watch, I started a second channel. It's called Sarah Pavan Anime. I'm gonna be reacting to many more anime on there in all genres. So check it out here. And thank you so much, guys. I cannot wait to take on the final season of Haikyuu with you. See ya.